Every now and then, in our adult careers, we have an epiphany. We recognize that there's more to life than making money. We recognize that helping others is significantly more fulfilling. We change career, change direction, and completely change the course of our lives. Today, we talk with a man who did exactly that, and he has helped meet the needs of many other men along the way. Grab your pen and paper. This will encourage you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hello and welcome to the Clarion Call TV show. I am Janice Hatcher Liggins, your host. This show is a platform for us to expose you to opportunities and resources you may not have known about. We like to showcase organizations in hopes that their services will benefit you or someone you know. Today we meet a man who changed course in his career and has helped many other men who are glad that he did. Joining us today is Mr. Greg Williams. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I appreciate you. you being on the show because you have an interesting story. And um, you started off, we're going to talk about how you started off in your career, maybe not the very beginning, but when I met you, you were an HR consultant, human resource consultant. What got you involved in the HR field? Well, the HR field has always been something that's near and dear to me. Um, the consultant piece um, happened as a result of uh, in the late 80s and the late 2000s, uh, the downsides and reorganizations, um, I found myself reorganized. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I pursued a career in consulting. Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a result of that, I was training. I worked for an organization as an independent trainer, um, training around the country, multiple uh, disciplines, teaching employment law, basic skills and human resources. Okay. Um, also, policies and procedures, um, development. Basically, I market myself as HR a la carte. Who was your, generally, your customer base? Primarily, I focus on the small companies that are up and coming. Mm -hmm. um, they were out marketing, getting new business. And what I was trying to do is to help them because I was familiar with the process as they grow, I knew what things to expect as they went from one level to the next. Okay. So can you give us the, an idea of a typical challenge you may have helped a customer meet in HR? One of the biggest challenges I can think of is um, healthcare costs. Um, most small companies at certain levels, um, they cannot afford a comprehensive uh, medical package, mm -hmm. but once they win a larger contract, they're able to compete for a much better program. Mm -hmm. So what I did with some small companies was help them put together uh, the proposal process, how to go out onto the market and find an attractive and affordable healthcare program uh, that was, you know, that met the size of the organization. Mm -hmm. You did some travel as well with your services. I mean, international travel. We actually lived out of the country for a period of time. Tell us about that. Yeah, I had an opportunity. Um, a friend of mine, a former co-worker, uh, was working in Afghanistan. Uh, she wanted to take leave, and she was quite creative. In order to take leave, she needed someone to fill her position. So as an HR consultant, I said an assignment is an assignment. Mm -hmm. So. I packed my bags for what I thought was 35 days or so, uh, and I turned it into 18 months nice. in Afghanistan. Nice. 
Well, that had to be a very interesting place to be anyway. Um, I mean, Afghanistan, I never think of anything good, <laughs> and that's probably not right. But I, you, you think of war you yeah. know, the whole time. So um, did you have to come into contact with any of that? Well, because of my previous background, having deployed twice to Iraq in uniform um, and also as a HR professional, when I went to Afghanistan, um, I actually had to tell my buddies it was so different. I had a building to stay in. I had my own room. Mm -hmm. um, because of my background, I actually did more than just HR. Um, at one point, they had someone coming in and out to relieve other people because I had the background in logistics and security and in HR, that's how I was able to stay on board wow. and fill those vacancies when those other people, as opposed to the company bringing in someone else to fill that gap. Well, that was great. Multiple yeah. talents and disciplines, mm -hmm. and it came to your benefit right yes. there. Wonderful, wonderful. So um, when you, how long have you done HR? Altogether, what do you think? Altogether, um, on the private sector, about 20 years. Wow. Yeah, and if I include my Marine Corps experience and the overlap, active duty and reserves, it can add another 20 to, on top of that. Wonderful, wonderful. So what I want to do now is we're, we have, uh, we're going to talk about how you transitioned from HR into your new life, but we're going to take a break real quick okay. and come back, okay? All right, wonderful. So how and why did Greg course from human resource consulting to a career that is in a totally different direction? That's next, stay tuned. One forty five over ninety two. One eighty over one eleven. One hundred and eighty two over a hundred. And I had a heart attack and a cardiac arrest and then a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from invisible or silent. My memory is shot. When I woke up, I couldn't speak. I can't button up a shirt. I can't run. I've had to learn to swallow again. That's the only more minutes that I have. And I'm 33, so I never see this coming. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Had I done this, had I done that, hell, I messed up. Get back on your plan, or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhpp.org. I had to tell everything's changed. I just tell them. Happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watch out. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? But now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back. We continue our conversation with Mr. Greg Williams. We want to hear what did cause him to change the course of his career. And what is he doing now? So welcome back, Greg. Glad to be able to have you. So we want to now unveil the big secret. So <laughs> what is it that caused you to make a shift in your career? And then what is it that you decided to do? Okay, sometimes 
we end up in a place and when we look back, we're not sure. We weren't planning to be here at this particular time. So how do I go from an HR professional to training for commercial, commercial driver's license? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a cousin that actually recruited for a national uh, commercial driving school. And doing family reunions, he would talk about how he recruited and what he did. And I always had this shell company just waiting to do something with it. So as part of my HR consultant role, I won a contract with the government mm -hmm. to provide drivers. Oh, okay. And um, basically what I was doing was providing drivers for the Army Field Band for three particular bands all over the United States. Wow. We would go out anywhere from seven to 45 days. And then one day the contracting officer asked me, well, how do you train your drivers before they go out? And I just kind of paused <laughs> and I said, I can fix this. So I bought a truck, I bought a trailer. So now I have a truck and a trailer. And I said, they take a road test and I make sure that they are qualified. Now I had this truck and trailer, a lot of overhead. Mm -hmm. I needed to do something with the overhead. That's how I started the training. Wow. And I started the training by simply putting a billboard on the side of the trailer had a nice position off the side of the main road, and it started from there. Wow. How long ago did that start? Uh, about 10 years ago now. Okay, that long. About 10 years ago. And it started off, um, I was doing it after, after work, and I found out that that format didn't work because my clientele, they were working also. Mm -hmm. And they were competing against overtime and getting off on time and traffic. <laughs> so I moved it to a weekend program. Mm -hmm. So it was a weekend only program. And it's not an all-day program, it's by appointment. It's still weekend only? It's still weekend only, okay. testing during the week. Okay, okay. So, um, do you personally drive? Or I do drive. Okay. Um, I've been driving um, for a very long time. Um, I grew up in North Carolina where you could actually drive school bus at age 16. Mm. Um, my father um, owned a small motor coach company, so I was driving motor coach from the age of 16. He also owned part-time, he had tractor trailers. So I've been around this for a very long time. Oh, wow. And um, my brother, he's in the business, so I would ride with him, you know, when I came home from leave from the, from the Marine Corps. And so it's just been around me for a long time somehow getting the contract with the Army gravitated me back to that whole setting. Especially the training part. The training part. So why, what made you start High Gear CDL? Well, when I started training, I had to come up with a name. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I'm not the most creative person in the world, and so I came up with High Gear CDL for works. commercial nice. driver's, driver's license mm -hmm. or commercial delivery, whichever one you want to look at it, mm -hmm. because I was doing a little bit of both. And so that's where the name originated. Um, I came up with the name, put the format together, you know, the logo and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So everything from A to, and I'm still learning, you know, now with social media, right, right. having the market a little bit different from before. Uh, so that's how it was created. So when you are actually conducting the training, when the guys come in and they go through the training, what's included? What, what are the, some of the mechanics of the training? How long does it take and what do they learn? Well, the uniqueness of the training is, is self-paced. Mm. I can go as fast as the individual wants to go, um, and there are resources. Um, some people, they want it right away, they study. Some people uh, have to generate the funds. And it's really designed to cater to the person based on their previous experience and how quickly they pick it up. Some people have zero experience and they pick it up rather quickly. Some people have some experience and their skills just needs to be sharpened. Uh, so the pace is really depending on the individual. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, are there any particular, there are no particular qualifications that they have to have? Other? Well, yes. Okay. Um, the qualifications is determined by Maryland MVA. Okay. It's all in the booklet. If they go to the MVA, pick up the booklet, study the booklet. The, the list of requirements are listed there. Um, age 21, of course, if they want to go out over the road. Um, and then all the, all the requirements there, the physicals, everything. Okay, okay. And so in the training, um, it, it, you go at their pace, but what kind of things do they actually learn? 
Well, I say I go at their pace, um, but I will confess I push people harder than they want to go. <laughs> okay. um, that's because of my Marine Corps background, mm. and I have a passion for wanting people to get more and in most cases, they don't know what they're not missing. Mm. And so I'm trying to combine all my experience on the road and being in this business, giving them more than what they actually thought they were gonna get um, in a compressed amount of time. What you know they'll actually need. Exactly. Mm. Every day when they're out there on the mm -hmm. highway. Because it's my safety, your safety, your kid's safety, your grandkid's safety wants to get out on the highway. And do you actually um, help them take the test or prepare for the, the CDL test? Well, what I try to do is to get the student to take initiative. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean by that is I could conduct classes to teach them the how to take the written test, but that's my way of saying I need you to take some initiative, have a vested interest in this, uh, study the booklet, study the, the study guides, look at the information, I'll help them with it, so once they go through that process, take the written test, get their DOT physical, take the written exam, and then have in their possession the learner's permit, at that point, now they're ready to start training. Wonderful. And what types of opportunities are there for people who have their CDL? The opportunities are amazing. Um, everything from the individual that wants to stay home, you know, be home every night, only mm -hmm. want to travel, maybe whatever they can do in the course of a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the full gamut of a person that says, I don't have a family, I don't have an apartment, and I just want to be gone. Uh, they can be gone from, name the number of months they want to oh, be on the road. Mm -hmm. They don't, you don't have to come home. Okay. You know, you're riding in a vehicle that's the equivalent to an efficiency. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking microwave, air condition, refrigerator, everything. Okay. The, the, it could be for, if you go out on the highway and look at the trucks on the highway and read the signs on the trucks or go shopping in every single place that you go into, those goods and services at one point arrived on the truck. Mm. It could have been shipped from overseas on a ship to the rail, but eventually on the truck, distribution center, and then into the store. Um, the thing that um, touched my heart about your story is that um, you have a heart for guys who have no way out, um, guys who may have even served time and can't get a job anywhere else, and, and you still work with them. Tell us about some of them and, and your experiences with them. Well, first of all, the individual think they don't have a way out. Mm. The reality is they do. Okay. And that's what I try to instill in them. Mm -hmm. When they come to me, a lot of people, what I call our returning citizens, mm -hmm. they are quick to tell us about why they're a returning citizen. And I ask them, okay, what does that have to do with what we're trying to do now? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do now is to give you a, a skill set that will change your life. Amen. And it's, it's obtainable, it's realistic. Um, I don't have to make up the stories because after they obtain their license, they can get a job. Some of these people will go out and get a job with major companies. Some may not be able to get a job with major companies because of their background, but they shouldn't be discouraged because there's so many other opportunities out there. Maybe not with that company, but exactly. there are plenty of other companies who, who may hire. Exactly. There are people that have no blemishes on their criminal record, but their driving record is such that they can't get a job with the larger companies that, okay. either. So okay. they're in a similar situation. But okay. the opportunities, they're endless. And, and once they get their license, sometimes we're talking in the same week, they're yeah. down interviewing and getting a job oh, and wow. starting the work. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I was just gonna ask you, how long does it generally take to get a job? And you're talking in sometimes within a week. Sometimes within a week. Um, some, some companies, as soon as they have that license in their possession, they will take them on board 
and put them through another training package. Mm. They just want them to have the license so they reduce their overall costs. Mm -hmm. um, some smaller organizations, their insurance company uh, won't allow the new drivers, but there are plenty of companies that will allow new drivers with zero experience. Wow. Some of my students have never driven anything larger than an SUV before they get their license, and in a week's time, they're training for major companies. And these are full-time positions in most cases, or? In most cases, full-time positions, but not all the time. Okay. Because sometimes a person is only looking for part-time work. Mm -hmm. I had, for example, I had a, a school teacher that, in a lack of a better terms, needed a break from the classroom. <laughs> and he was looking for something part-time. And he was wondering if he could work part-time. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. He went out, he found a job working part-time, and he took that part-time on the weekend job, transferred that to every summer he's working part-time. So now what he's doing is actually transitioning for retirement now. Oh, wow. You had even told me about a gentleman who had a boat, was it, um, and wanted to transport his boat, or what was it? Well, I had a gentleman, uh, he's actually a CPA mm -hmm. that has a truck, okay. Okay. that he's getting modified and he wants to transport his race car. Oh, his race car. Okay. And he wants to be able to legally tow the light race car with the weight and everything, but he wants to know how to operate on the road. Mm -hmm. And he's going through the training now. And he's one of those gentlemen that has a very short timeline, but he's committed. And he has a target of next month being able to drive that truck out to Tennessee to the race. Wonderful. So how do people, um, how do you find them and how do they find you? A combination. Uh, of course, referrals are really big. Uh, people that I've trained, they refer other people to me. Um, as grueling as I can be with the training, they say, hey, this is the guy you want to go with. Um, I do some advertisement. You know, my truck is parked next to a main thoroughfare. Um, when we go on the highway to take tests and train. The phone's ringing, the logo's on the truck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the process, I'm a little slow with the social media piece, but I'm trying to you know, get up to speed there. Mm -hmm. um, have a YouTube video out, and a lot of people are finding the YouTube video about the inspection of the truck, which is a major component of the test. And they like the format, and they call and says, hey, I saw your YouTube video, um, I wanna train with you. And you have, uh, one gentleman, um, you mentioned to me earlier, one gentleman who um, actually did serve time. Yes. And, um, but now is doing well. Yes. Has more than one truck. Tell yes. us about him. Um, this individual came to me. Um, he had been, he had, again, he did about 10 years. Uh, then he was, you know, doing fabrication work. And he told me, he says, I should have done this 10 years ago. Mm. And about a year, a little over a year ago, he got his license. Mm -hmm. And after he got his license, he started running his truck. And from that point, he started bringing other people in and helping them. Wow. Um, in other words, he would buy the truck, buy the trailer, and lease that truck and trailer out to the person. The businessman all the way. Yes. Serve, serve time, but he's using it. Right. He un entrepreneurial he, mindset. Exactly, and he believes in helping people. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, this, just yesterday, um, he sponsored a gentleman that just got his license yesterday. He paid for someone to get the training from you? He paid for all of the training wow. uh, for this individual. Now that this person has completed the training, this person is going to be put into one of his trucks and they will be able to go out and make a very good living. The thing I like about it is, um, you know, the guy who has his race car and wants to tow his own race car, the CPA, okay, he's He's got it like that. He doesn't have anything to worry about. But, but to help those who really may not have many other options or at least don't realize they have many other options, those who've served time and the system, if you will, tends to be against them. That's the part I think is critical. And um, many other guys could probably, and, and ladies, if they, if they want, I'm sure you're not discriminatory against no, ladies. No. <laughs> but uh, it's great opportunity you know, to be able to get on their feet and, you know, have a way up and a way out. So 
I am really glad to hear hear that. Um, and you mentioned that the one guy who um, bought the truck and sponsored someone else actually gave you a quote um, that said um, that he sh that's when he said he should have done it a long time ago. Yes. Wow. Yeah. He, he basically I talked to him yesterday because I called him because I said, "Hey, your guy just passed." Okay. And. Um, he goes, okay, well, what do we do now? I says, well, I'm just trying to figure out how much, you know. And he says, well, he's going to be on the road for the next week and a half. Wow. And I said, hey, when I see you, pay me. It's okay. Uh -huh. I know you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, you know, I'll be back, you know. But he said this has been awesome for him. He mm -hmm. says he can make more on one load than what he was making in a week's time at his last job. Wow. He's gone from one truck to five trucks in a year. In a year. In a wow. year. So he's passionate about it. He's passionate about getting other people into the mix.